Greystone Manor, Gasport, New York. Here we are. This place is really cool and really old, and we are gonna go inside here to start our investigation and do a preliminary walkthrough. We have right now equipment already set up. I walked to the top of the stairs, put a REM pod up there, along with some cat balls and a GoPro is recording it. If that stuff goes off, we'll have it captured and recorded. And we just wanna get an initial idea of what the baseline activity is in here. If we're gonna capture something as soon as we walk through the door, or if it'll take a little while for them to get used to us. But look who's right there behind you, Dave. Oh my God, it's Eric. Eric, the Greystone Manor Cat. Eric. Off to find his evening meal. Ignoring us as, you know, most cats do. That's right. Let's head inside. Let's do it. Yeah, the property goes back to 1833. The house, we have documentation that it's definitely been here since 1850. Um, we know in 1833 it was originally a, a fruit farm and there was a structure here. We're still trying to get documentation to find out exactly when it was built, but we know it was between 1833 and about 1840s. So it goes back that far. Those original owners didn't pass away in the house, uh, but the, the <laughs> but the owner Silas Newcomb, um, he was a cooper. He built carriages. And he also had a blacksmith shop out back as well. But there was a feud between his sons. So when Silas passed away, um, the sons inherited the property. One son gets all the acreage, which is like 250 acres, all the orchards and everything. And then the other son only gets two apple orchards that are like two acres, that's it. So the other son got everything else, the house, the property, the barns, everything. So we have Curtis Root. He was the owner that was here in the 1860s. He passed away in 1889. Um, and then his wife, Melissa Root, passed away here as well. She died of pneumonia in 1901. And her father passed away. His name is Daniel Stowell. And he was here. A lot of people, when they were sickly at the end of their lives, would go live with family and pass in the houses. So it's pretty common to have family members die in the house. So her dad died here as well. And then the next door was in from the Roots when they came in, the Kalkenbergs. The people who own it, Henry and Minnie Kalkenberg. So they both passed in the house as well. Both breathing issues as well, pneumonia, um, and other lung issues as well. So lots of breathing issues in this house. You hear a lot of strange breathing too. And then their son-in-law, Dorsen Rasmussen, also died in the house. And then going back to the Root family, they had a younger son named Ben Root who also died here on the property, died in the house, and he was only like four years old. My favorite thing so far about this house. <laughs> the original doorbell. All right, well, what do you want to do? You want to make our way up to the second floor first? Yeah, let's start up there and then work our way back down through here and then on down to the basement. Let's do it. The whole area is called Gasport because it was all natural little um, gas rivulets that used to run through the creek beds and everything. So there are all these little blue flames that used to burn everywhere along the creek beds. And um, the Native Americans thought it was holy ground, so they buried everybody here. So we were told a couple different things. One was um, by the little bridge that you have to cross over the Erie Canal to get to our house. They found like 20 bodies in that area when they widened the canal at one point. And then there was something called uh, the Caner Road. It's a Caner Hill. Um, and that was a huge burial mound. And that's not even a mile from us on a diagonal going towards like crossing the canal. And um, massive burial mounds. There were just, you know, hundreds of people. The one that's on Caner had like thousands of people in it. And this is back in 1918. Um, there's a fruit farm, it's still a fruit farm. There's still fruit trees there. That hill is still there. And a farmer was taking old peach trees out with a tractor that were dead. And as he was pulling the peach trees out, in the roots were all these bodies. So he's pulling out like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of skeletons out of this hill. And um, people in Buffalo and Rochester heard about this. It made the news. People got on trolleys, drove, rode out here to come and see these Native American bones that they were digging up. And they were going through, picking through, picking up artifacts, picking up bones, taking skulls home with them as souvenirs. So people were just like rooting through these piles of bones and just taking them home with them. I love this staircase. Me too, it is gorgeous. Yes, it is. 
That's me. Wow! Sorry. <laughs> Okay. If there's anyone in here with us, my name is Ryan and this is Dave. And we're gonna be staying here with you tonight. We heard a lot of stories about this house, its former owners, the Root family, as well as possibly some activity with some indigenous people. You shouldn't be here. Immediately, as soon as we... This is the first thing that's coming through, is you shouldn't be here. Well, that's a, gr that's a great way to start off this episode. Why shouldn't we be here? What's wrong with us being here? What I do is I go into a house and I read it. I'm a psychic, so I'm like, oh, I want to see what's, what's going on here. I was telling them not to bother people, because people were getting attacked when they would come to be here at the house to visit and stuff. They were having memory loss, they couldn't focus, they were having all kinds of crazy things happen, and they were not feeling well, and all kinds of crazy stuff. And, the, and they said, well, we're vetting people. We want to know why they're here. Like, we're not allowing people here unless, you know, we want to know why, what their intentions are, basically. This is the room where Heather said most of the deaths in the house have occurred is in this room, right? Yes. Yeah, she did say most, not all, but most of the deaths did occur in here. Uh, the room across the hall as well, and then downstairs in the uh, like dining room area. We were doing sessions in the hallway because we get walk you hear footsteps up and down the hallway. So they had uh, motion detectors in the hallway, and they were trying to feel the floor to see if you could feel the footsteps that were happening. And she was laying on her belly and she had her arms in the threshold of the green doorway in, with her head in the hallway, and her body was in the green room. And she was, she's laying there, all lights were off, right? So she's laying like that on her elbows, and she's and we're saying, okay, if you're in the hallway, you can do that. And something grabbed the ends of her jeans, her pant legs, and pulled them into the green room, tugged them really hard at the same time. And she's like, what in the world? Do you think Doug's upstairs? I don't know. Something just passed in front of that light. Oh, to make it go off? No, it was like, see how you can see the purple light here? Oh, shadows in the stairwell are crazy. Yes. Yeah. We I don't know if this shadow. camera would have seen that, but... Mm -hmm. Up here, <clears throat> I was watching this. Yeah. No, Doug, usually you can hear him walking around. He's sort of heavy. Eric's there. I hope that would have gone off, or I hope that would have captured it, because I'm kind of punched in on this, so you can't really see it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, there he is. Is it Doug? Doug? Yep, I see cat. <laughs> False alarm. Yeah, I see it now. I see Doug. Okay. <laughs> Just a cat. How many people passed away in this house? Can you tell us? This is a beautiful- Are you scared? Yeah, Ryan, are you scared? Whew, terrified. Mother. Mother. Are you scared, mother? We're not scared. We're here to help tell your story, to show the world that you can still communicate with people after you've passed on, if that is in fact true. We want to prove to ourselves that the weird things that we've experienced in our lives aren't imaginary, aren't delusional. And we want you to be able to tell your story about this house, about your life, or about what happened to you here in this place. Yeah, so come on out and tell your story tonight. We're going to be here all night, and we would love to speak with you if you could do that for us. Close it. The... Close what? The door to the closet? Oh, that's right, because Heather told us about this trunk in here. Yeah. There's a lot of tragedy associated with that trunk in the closet. A, lo a lot of tragedy, yes. It's from Auschwitz. It was um, 
it was in the warehouses there. So back when they freed everyone, when they came and liberated everybody from Auschwitz, everyone started emigrating to the United States, but they were, no one had anything. No one had any clothes or anything. Um, people thought they were going to Auschwitz. They thought they needed luggage, but they didn't. So what they were doing is people would bring trunks there and they were just stockpiling and they had this big warehouse full of all this stuff. But then the people who were alive were just given things like, here, take this with you. So they took these two trunks, brought it here to the States with them and they emigrated immediately to the United States and settled in the Buffalo area. They were here until um, about 2014 when the husband passed away and then the mom was left alive, still living with her daughter and um, they had a son and daughter. And the daughter was taking care of the mom. At this point, she had Alzheimer's really bad, the mom and the daughter snapped, um, ended up murdering the mom. And then she drove to a hotel room down in Pennsylvania, committed suicide. And then that left the son alive to inherit all this stuff from all these people dying. And so he started clearing out the house in the Buffalo, in Buffalo, and brought all these big pieces to his friend's house out near us in Lockport and said, hey, can you sell this stuff for me or just keep it here till we sell the house? I just want to store it here. I want to get rid of this house. They're like, okay, that's fine. Meantime, this, the son had inherited all this money from people dying, bought a bunch of drugs, was partying and died of a drug overdose. So now this guy who lives out near us was having this yard sale because now he's freaked out because he has all the stuff that doesn't belong to him, but it's got Nazis, murders, drug overdose, all this horrible stuff attached to it. He thinks it's now cursed. So now he's just like giving it away. <laughs> but then people will have run pads in there and they'll go off and the hangers that are on the bar head above it will swing. They'll start moving. And we've seen shadow people in that closet too. So if you leave the closet door open, it's painted white inside and you'll see like almost like a head pokes out and looks at you, you'll see shadow people in that closet above it. There is an energy to this house. Oh yeah. A very interesting energy. You know what it reminds me of? What? McIntyre Villa. It does. Yeah. In Atchison, Kansas. Yes. I'm gonna pull this one shut too. If you'd like to open any of those doors, feel free to open any doors that you would like to anytime throughout the night. We'd love to see that. The gold room. Let me show you. Show us what? You gonna open that door? Open which, whichever door is your favorite. A lot of people, as soon as they walk into that gold room, they feel like a stabbing, almost like a stabbing pain right in their solar plexus. Almost like somebody's stabbing them and it feels like extreme pressure, like they can't breathe and they've thrown up. We've had like four different people walk into that room and throw up right away. Um, they'll feel very sick. They feel like they can't breathe. And then uh, the closet door opens and closes by itself. There's a ghost cat in there that jumps on people's beds and they like to mess with your feet in that room. So people have had the covers lifted off of their feet. Like the wife will be asleep. <laughs> we had a husband and wife in there. It was just really funny. Um, and he said he felt the covers lift off off his feet and then something it said it felt like a finger on the bottom of his foot pushing down his foot like this. And he's like, he thought it was his wife at first, like somehow like touching his feet. And he looked over and she's completely on her side. She's not aiming at him at all. And she, he, he was so freaked out. We're friends. We're not here to intrude or we're not here to make you feel uncomfortable. We're here to learn about your life. I do not like that portrait right there. <laughs> Me either. And I saw that, like when I was filming you from over there, I saw it in the reflection of this mirror and it almost made me scream. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My gosh, she has the creepiest look on her face. Oh, this is the kids room. Yes, ooh. <laughs> Have you look in here? I have not been in here now. Look in this. Look at look at the. There's a ventriloquist doll. There's a creepy baby with no eyes. Oh my god.
Wow, oh, they just get creepier. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray Greystone my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the clowns my soul to take. Lots of footsteps on the stairs, um, but also people get pushed down these stairs all the time. The previous owner warned me all the time. She said, listen, half the reason we moved out of this house is because the paranormal activity was so insane. Um, she had a bunch of little kids. The, her little kids said that there was a crazy laughing lady on the second floor. They used to describe her as, she was like wearing a big long dress and she had this crazy maniacal smile and she would like laugh maniacally after them and chase them down the hallway. going through into our side and they would fall down those back um, servant stairs. If there are any children in here with us, my name is Ryan and this is Dave. And we have a lot of toys we're gonna be playing with tonight. You're more than welcome, no matter where we are in the house, to come out and en enjoy the toys with us. You can touch them, you can make them light up. Sure can. There's one at the top of the stairs. Oh, what was that? Something just popped right here in front of me. <laughs> that was loud. That scared me. What was it though? I don't know. It was it was the door. Something on the door. Sure can. There's one at the top of the oh, stairs. What was that? Sure can. There's one at the top of the oh, stairs. What was that? Something just popped right here in front of me. Can you shut that door? Which of the kids here is the strongest? Let's see who Go can away. push the door shut. Okay. We'll leave you alone. Sorry. Can I open this door? Am I allowed to open this door? We also have this shadow person at the top of the stairs in the right at the beginning of the hallway going into the other rooms where the green and gold rooms are and the and further down where the kids room is. But he stands right at the end of the hallway. He's about eight feet tall, 10 feet tall. And he walks around, he stands at the top of the stairs. I've seen him reach out to people on SLS and try and grab people as they're walking down the stairs too. So we think he might be the one pushing people. When we first started, I would say the B&B, maybe three years ago now, um, we had a paranormal group in here. We did the tour, walked him up through the rooms, turned around to come back. And she stopped and she said, I can't go down the hallway that way. She can't, she didn't want to come back down this way. I said, why? She goes, there's a giant black shadow figure. It's standing at the end of the hallway. It's got like red eyes, but I could, but it's looking into the red room. So the back of its head is facing her. So she was freaking out. She's like, this is not human. She's like, Whatever that is, it's huge. It's almost filling up the hallway and it's like menacing, but it's looking into the red room, but it's standing in the hallway blocking it. And like, she goes, can you please let me down the other stairs? And then about two weeks later, another team came in, another group of people, just friends came in investigating and they had their 13 year old granddaughter with them. Been walking around the house, did the same thing, did the tour, took them to the top of the stairs, go to the exact same spot, um, down where the bathroom, kids room is, turn around to come back down the hallway and she stops and she goes, oh, wow. she goes, oh no, I can't go down there. I go, why? Describe what you're seeing. She goes, it's a big shadow figure. It's got like glowing red eyes, it looks like she said, but I can almost see through it, but it's like looking into the red room. And, word for word she described exactly it was so trippy i'm like that is crazy so she's going to can hear me though that's what she was freaking out about she's like it, it can hear me it's, it knows i'm afraid of it they said that there were funerals right here in this parlor right in this bay window this huge viewing window and that if there was a funeral going on or a viewing that carriages and horses would pull up to the hitching posts out there and they'd be able to see the deceased through the window. Is that true? There's definitely, it just feels like there's a thousand people out back. Uh, you just, the feeling of being crowded and watched 
is insane. I mean, I lived in the country in Georgia for like seven years, so it's not like I'm not used to being in the country. And um, this feels totally different. You hear movement, you hear footsteps. We people hear people running up on us. It sounds like bare feet, like people running with bare feet on mud. You know, like in the summer when you're a kid and you run in the grass, that, that, that plodding sound, you'll hear that. And it'll feel like people are running up on you. Um, you see shadow people, we've caught shadow people, pictures in the tree line, and they're tall. They're like eight to 10 feet tall. They're not human. They say that they're either angelic, but they call them these keepers of the dead or their guardians going back to Native American time. But then you have a mix of the graves that are also in our backyard that are modern. And we believe they go back to the Newcomb family, the original family who lived here. Oh. Excuse us, puppies. You wanna head down into the basement? Yep, let's head down. There is nothing to fear but fear itself. And of course, the boogeyman. Yeah, that, that basement's got a lot of weird stuff going on. Um, I know that that back part, I know it sounds strange, that the basement is basically an exact um, blueprint of the upstairs, sort of like a cross shape. So it's it's got this weird wing. So the back corner where you're talking about where the pool table is, when we moved in, there were no walls down there. We ended up doing construction to try and close that all off because I was getting such a bad whatever that was, like you'd walk through that basement as soon as you walked into that area, even though there was no wall, you felt like you're walking into something. And I really wanted that separated. I wanted a door. I wanted to be able to shut that room off. So we're now down in the basement. And the interesting thing about the basement at Greystone Manor is it's not just a single room underneath the house. This basement has hallways and rooms that are the entire size of this house. So it's huge. It is a it is a huge basement. Ooh, I feel like I'm in the 70s. <laughs> Pretty regularly, we get a man, um, especially if you're doing like an SB7 or Estes method, or if you just have a spirit box go, you'll have a man saying, help me, help me. Um, and then you have a, a woman saying, shut up. You'll hear arguing. And then he'll, they'll, he'll say that he's buried under the floor. He says he's in the floor under where the pool table is. And um, he'll say it, it, it's, it just, they'll repeat, the, help me, help me, it's so crazy. And we get the same sort of, he'll, it, they're just speaking it, it's the voice. Um, and it is hollow under that pool table. We tapped on it, someone had a cane and we were like, and it's a circle. So there's like this weird space on that floor. So out of the entire basement, this room that is behind this door is said to be the most active part of this basement. People have captured some incredible pieces of activity and evidence in this room, and it's going to be an important part of our investigation tonight, and I'm excited to see what we can catch in here. Let's check it out. And note, when we walked in here, as the pool balls are, we are not going to touch them. They are all sitting on the edge of each and every pocket. So if we come down here later and one of these balls is knocked into the pocket, it was not one of us. We are not going to touch these balls at all. That's what she said. We shall see. If there's anyone down here, Heather says that she believes there's someone buried underneath of this pool table, underneath this basement. Is there someone buried down here? Even though I do what I do, I'm a psychic medium and all that stuff, and I'm communicating, I can tell that there's definitely something that's not human. I mean, there's ghosts and there's spirits and there's angels, there's different things going on. These are protector energies, whatever they are, but there's something in the basement that's just not, it's not normal. You ask, you know, have you ever been in human form? It says no, um, they're big. And I have never been um, frozen before like I was in that basement that was absolutely nuts I had um, 
I was here with friends of mine doing a little uh, investigation thing and it was only like, I think it was four of them. And it was a good friend of mine and his brother and his brother started getting sick immediately. We we're sitting around the table. It was just the three of us sitting there. He started getting sick to his stomach. Like I mean, he's like, there's something in here. I can't, he's like, I've done a million investigations and I can't stay in here. He started freaking out and he went upstairs because he started getting really rattled. He wasn't feeling good. So me and him, me and my friend were just sitting there across from each other. And all of a sudden we see this shadow start to form in the doorway going into the pool table room. And this is big, it's as tall as a doorway. And you can see it like peeking around and we're look, looking at each other and we're like, we feel like if we made any move, they're gonna, it's gonna see us. It was almost like if we sit still, it won't notice us. And we felt paralyzed. We felt like we couldn't move because we couldn't leave because it was in the doorway where we had to go. It was absolutely nuts. And it was solid black. My name is Ryan and this is Dave. We're gonna be here tonight and we're gonna be coming down to visit and we would love to get a chance to talk to you. We think this place is beautiful. We'd love to get to know about your house, your home. If you did live here, if you didn't live here and you were a part of the tribe that used to occupy this land and used to live on this land, we come with the utmost respect. We don't mean you any disrespect or harm. We're not sure if you speak our language or our tongue, but we'd love to be able to see you or experience your presence tonight. The basement's a totally different world than what's up on this first floor, because you got all the root stuff on this floor. Very different than the upstairs. It's got its own energy. So, and then the outside's a whole nother thing because of all the Native American stuff. Well, Dave, what do you think? Are you ready? The sun is almost down. Are you ready to start this investigation? Go lights out and investigate Grace. Library. Library. Do they have a library here? Not that I've heard of. Hmm. But let's go lights out and start our investigation here at Greystone Manor. There's a lot of cool things to see, a lot of things to experience, and I'm excited to spend the night here. Let's do it, Greystone Manor. This is a new one for us. We're super excited. Let's get it started. As we begin tonight's investigation, we've had to decide if an abandonment is even possible here. Because Greystone Manor is half bed and breakfast, and half the permanent residence of Heather, her husband, their two dogs, and three cats. Even if we set up the cameras and equipment and leave the house, it wouldn't be completely empty, because it would still be occupied by two people and five animals, which could contaminate our footage. So for this one, We'll just skip the abandonment and start with an Estes Method Spirit Box session in the basement. All right, so we are setting everything up. Dave is readjusting the mail meter here. We're in the basement of Greystone Manor. Now, one fascinating fact about this that Heather told us is that she believes this basement has some sort of malevolent or malicious energy she says she can't even hardly stand to be in this room. And that's why they ended up putting these walls back up when they bought the house, because she did not want this part of the house, this pool room area, to be open to the rest of the basement because she didn't want to have to look at it. So I'm going to be sitting back here by myself in this pool room, listening to the spirit box through headphones to perform an Estes Method spirit box session. Dave will be in the other room outside around the corner asking questions, not even in the room with me, and I'll be calling out the answers that I hear. Behind me in the hallway leading up to this room, there's a laser grid, which as you can see Dave walking down through there, if something passes through those lasers, not only will you be able to see it on the camera pointed down this hallway, but you'll also be able to see it on this camera right here facing me. So there is quite a bit of possibility for paranormal activity down here, and we have a lot of pieces of equipment set up that could possibly capture something unexplained. This is gonna be a lot of fun, I'm excited. Hopefully whatever she says she feels down here that's dark and malicious and that has been known to be confrontational and aggressive, hopefully they come out and speak to us. I hope so, man, I hope so. Hopefully some of these pool balls get moved or something. Let me put the blindfold on here and then put the headphones on so that I can Make sure that the spirit box sweep is good. 
turning it on. Okay, so we're going to go with the AM. Blindfold is going on, and as always, we're recording this sweep so that you at home can hear it as well. Whatever I hear, you will hear too. Okay, Ryan, are you ready? Ryan, are you ready? Ryan, I'm going to feed you to that moose. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, so we're going to make our way over here through the laser grid. Sure, that's bright. And over here, I've got a millimeter. I thought I heard a very faint voice say, It's coming. A millimeter set up on the table here. Okay, so. My name is Dave. My friend Ryan is over in the room with the pool table in it. We have come here tonight to try and speak with you. He has a radio. He can hear your voice. If you want to communicate, please do so through the radio. Do you understand? Again, my name is Dave. My friend Ryan is in the other room listening for you to speak. Can you come through and tell us what your name is? Can you tell us through the radio? I heard a woman's voice say no or go. No or go. If you'd like for us to leave, I'm pointing right now at a device with a an instrument there with a screen on it. Can you try and touch that? That'll let me know that you want us to leave. I have a strange feeling like I feel someone entered the room. It's not me. Who just went into the room there with Ryan? They're back. They're back. I thought I heard a man say. We were down here earlier. Do you remember us from earlier? We're told that there's lots of shadow figures and unwelcome entities and smells and things that come from this basement. Something inhuman. Is that you? Very very muffled voice, almost inaudible. I just would love to know what your name is and why you're here. Is this your house? Or one of the... I feel a of... cold breeze on my right side. If you're standing beside Ryan there, can you push one of those pool balls? Can you make one of those balls roll? We've been told that you're able to do that, to make those balls roll and move. We would love to, to see you do that, if you can. You don't have to be afraid of us, by the way. We were, we were invited to come in here tonight to try and talk to you, and that's why we're here. Is that okay? Okay, I'm gonna walk into the room. Let's see if he can pick up on that. Can 
can you tell my friend? Man's voice. What my name is. Very muffled. One word, though. I didn't hear it in the moment. Tell him what my name is. But it's almost as if this voice answers Dave's question before he even asks it. Can you tell my friend? Man's voice. What my name is. And I guess it's a good thing that I didn't understand this voice because even though I didn't call out what it said, Dave still asks the question. Tell him what my name is. Could it be whoever's haunting this basement can hear our thoughts? Like the shadow Heather described on the second floor. It's got like glowing red eyes, it looks like she said, but I can almost see through it, but it's like looking into the red room and word for word, she described exactly. It was so trippy. I'm like, that is crazy. So she's going, it can hear me though. That's what she was freaking out about. She's like, it, it can hear me. It's, it knows I'm afraid of it. I thought I heard someone say, help me. What is it that you need help with? What is it that I could help you with? Tell me. We heard that Maybe you hid some alcohol down here in the basement, is that true? You do? Hey Dave. Yeah? Do you want to switch me? Sure. Cause I have, I'm having the hardest time staying focused on this. I don't know what it is. I don't normally have trouble doing it, but yeah, let's switch. Okay. So I just left Dave in there. And the one thing I didn't want to tell him was that I started to feel very irritated and agitated sitting in there. I don't know what it is. I felt like I had to get up and leave because I just started to get really angry. But I'm wondering if he has the same experience. All right, we've switched out. I'd love any of the spirits of this house to come and speak through me to me through this radio. Dave is sitting where I was. Can you go talk to him now? Maybe you'd rather talk to him. Use that box in his hands. Get as close as you can to him and try and speak as loudly and clearly as you can. Heather feels like there's someone in that room that's almost malicious, that's almost angrier. I am covered in cold chills and I can feel somebody standing to my right side. I felt that too. I felt like a cold energy beside me. Who's kind of like I'm about to get hit. <laughs> Who's standing beside Dave? There was a male voice there. Who's the man that's standing over there beside Dave? Oh, God. Who are you and why do you like to make people feel uneasy in that room? Why do you like to make people feel uncomfortable? I'm covered in cold chills. I feel like... I can see and feel a blackness enveloping around me. And I don't like it. Can you tap Dave on the shoulder? Right on his right shoulder. Or touch one of these lights. Go up to one of the ones that's in that room with Dave and do this. Can you do that? My name is Ryan. Can you go and tell Dave 
my name. A loud sound right up above here. How many fingers am I holding up? Can you go tell Dave how many fingers I'm holding up? Ryan? That's me. Thank you. It was a female voice I should preface. Who's the lady? A female voice said Ryan is what I'm trying to say. Oh. What? What just happened? Oh, I didn't like that. We are, yes, we are blindfolded when we do this, but there's some ambient light. And I just saw blackness go that way. And then it got real cold. I did not like that. Who's in there with Dave? You seem to like to show yourself through shadows and make people feel uncomfortable. But why won't you speak through the box in his hand? Tell him how many fingers I'm holding up. This number right here, can you tell him that? Tell him this number right here. I am like ice cold. Yes, if you're very close to Dave, speak to him. Is there someone buried underneath that floor? If there's someone buried underneath that floor, make one of the lights go off or stand in front of that box that's on the table to make the music play. I don't know where you are if you can hear me, but I too am having a hard time focusing on this, but solely because of whatever energy is in this room. I'm going to walk in here. Okay, I'm in here with him now. Who's giving us both that very overwhelming feeling in here? There's a deep male voice. Do you mean anyone harm? Or are you just protecting this house? Ugh. Are you still down here? Yeah, I'm in here. Oh. I just walked in a couple seconds ago. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you felt that while you were here doing this. Yes. But, wow. I felt like something right to my right side. Right here. Yes. Ooh. And Ooh. not only could I not focus, but I started to get overwhelmingly irritated and angry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, to the point to where that was half of the reason why I couldn't focus on the words coming through is because I just so, I felt so irritated. I felt like I wanted to just throw something across the room. Yeah, I uh, in the beginning, I felt a little irritated, but that went away. Um, so that's very strange. Besides that, it's been pretty silent, except for a couple of noises that might be explainable from upstairs. Really? Yeah. But. And I don't know if it happened to you, but I kind of felt whatever that was kind of came in waves. Mm hmm. But it was very threatening feeling. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. It was. Since we're not getting anything through the spirit box, do you think we should... Um, I can run upstairs here because I need to get a new battery for this camera. And just to try it and see what happens, what if we just for like 10 minutes maybe did a seer session down here? Let's do it. I mean, maybe that's going to be the answer to whatever this is. Yeah. So let me run up and grab that really fast. And we will resume whenever I'm back. Okay. All right, Ryan and I are back. And we've come down here to try and communicate with whomever may... St that was me. To try and communicate with whomever may still be residing in this house. He has a device on that he is wearing that you can use and... Hey Dave, before... Oh, too late, it's already gone. I was gonna say before you get into it, I there was already an image from like Jump Street. Oh really? Yeah. It kind of looked like a galaxy of stars and I could almost make out like a shadow, faint shadow in the bottom left corner. Huh. That's weird. My name is Dave and this is Ryan again and we would like for you to use the device that he is wearing to show yourself to help tell your story. It's just another way that you can try and communicate with us. So can you come through and show us what you look like? Show us a picture of yourself. Can you do that? If you get close to me and try and describe what you look like, it'll show as an image in front of my eyes. I know that may sound strange to you, but I'd love to see what you look like. Image generating? Okay, we've got an image coming through. I'm still feeling that energy in here. Mm. What have you got? I don't really know. It's like light that is formed into different shapes. In the top right corner, it looks like an eye that's almost like a cat's eye. Down at the bottom, I don't know what that even is. It's like a mix between a fish and a pig's nose. And then in the top left, I can kind of see what looks to be like bird feather type texture. I don't know. It's like, or maybe it is like a face. I don't know. It's very weird. Nothing really definitive. Okay. Well, now you're understanding how to use the device. You've made a couple of images come through. And we are able to see that, as you can tell. And even this right here, did you hear that? Play some nice music. We've got other devices set up around here. Different instruments that you can try. Like that. And we brought these for you, so please come through and use them. Is there any chance that you can come through and show Ryan a picture here of what this land was used for? What was this land? Come through and show us that you're here, please. I know that you can do that. Ooh, image coming up. Okay. Uh, two little kids. This appears to be sitting at a school desk. And someone's writing on a chalkboard. I don't know if it's another kid, but he's sitting at a desk too. They're writing on a chalkboard. There's books in the background. Appears to be a school. If that image is significant to you, can you set off one of these instruments for us?
Oop, we got another one. Another image. <laughs> okay, we got a man in a suit with a red hat on of some kind looking in the mirror at him. It appears to be a mirror. And in the mirror, it looks like a kid with a green hat on. Hmm. So it's like an adult man looking in the mirror at it, and in the reflection as a child. Is that you? Are you, are you looking at yourself when you were a child as a kid? you can, use one of these devices we have to confirm that. If you want to say yes, you can just go like this. We'll understand that as yes. We'll give you one last chance. Can you show me this one last thing? One more image and then I'm, I'm taking it off. Show me something to help tell your story. Show me an image to let people know who you were. And then maybe we could start the process of trying to talk to you. Maybe we could start the process of trying to talk to you and... Figuring out who you are. Image popping up. Ooh. It is a sunset, maybe? I see a sunset. Sunset. And mm. that's it. Yeah, it's like mostly orange on screen. It fades into like blues and yellows at the bottom. And it kind of looks like a sun halfway down the horizon. Or maybe if it's not the sun, it's just an orange screen with a whack a mole on it. Hmm. But yeah, I mean. It kind of looks like the sun down there. And it's gone. All right. We've given you many, many, many opportunities to communicate here with us. And aside from the... the very strong energy presence that we felt in here, there hasn't been much else. Not much at all. Is the energy that we were experiencing in here, is that what is keeping you from talking to us? If it is, can you confirm by touching one of our instruments here? <laughs> That's what she said! By touching one of our devices here, could you do that? Why don't we go upstairs and do an SLS sweep of the second floor? According to Heather, she says those bedrooms are off the charts. Okay. With paranormal activity. So let's go up there and see if any of that activity can show itself to us. Let's do it. Let's go give it a shot on to the second floor SLS sweep. Let's go. All right, Ryan, now what are we doing? Pretty. It's like, pretty. That's what it sounded like. So we are getting ready to head up to the second floor. This is an area where Heather said there's multiple different spirits between the different bedrooms up there, and they each have their own activity. So we have four cameras set up there right now in trying to cover every single bedroom. The pink room, there's a camera covering the gold and green room shooting across the hallway. <laughs> and there's a camera in the children's room where she says there's something that likes to throw things and move things and people have been scratched and 
all types of crazy stuff. So we're going to do an SLS sweep of that floor. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We will see. We'd love to see. And we're going to be using ghost. Tube. <laughs> what? We we're, said we would like to see. We're going to be using ghost tube Vox because when we did an SLS sweep with Vox the last time, when we were at the Asher Walton house, we had some interesting results with it. So uh -huh. let's head up. Let's do it. Any member of the Root family, please come out and talk to us. It's a babe or something like that. Really? Babe. babe. <laughs> right here in front of this pink room, there's been multiple ladies who have seen this tall, dark shadow with piercing red eyes that they say intimidates, scares, and forces them to go down the other set of stairs. Whoever that is, hey, you. I said, hey, you. Hey, you. Oh. oh, wait, I think that was a false positive. What, did it map something? It did. Is this where you stand? Ew. Is this where you stand? Right here? Ooh. That gave me chills. That was the same man's voice, too. Yeah. Colossian. Colossian. <laughs> I thought I heard golosh. Come on, Ryan is trying to take your picture. And we'd like for you to show up, please. It's hard. Very <laughs> Very thin or very fit. One of the other stories that Heather talked about was the family. There was a family that lived here prior to her and her husband, and apparently they had kids. And when the kids were young, they would come running through into the parents' bed. They'd come running through into the parents' bedroom. And when they came running through into the... Okay, once was strange, twice is just very weird. Yeah. And But the kids came running through into the parents' bedroom because they said they were being chased down the hallway by what they called the laughing lady. And uh, that story gave me chills. Could you imagine as a kid being chased by a woman who is laughing? Down this hallway? Down this hallway? From the pink room down the hallway? That would be creepy. What's your name, laughing lady? Michelle. Michelle? <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Ew. Michelle. Can you laugh? Can you laugh real loud for us? That sounds like a kid. If you're one of the kids, we left a music box down the hall there for you in the bedroom. 
Oops. Ooh. Yeah. You got something? Yeah, something mapped over there by the chair. And it was over by the mantle here. And it just like went across the room from right to left. And then eventually just disappeared. On top. Would that save want to talk? I'm not sure. I'm going to switch arms here. There was a man in this room who got hurt by his own animal and then died. What animal was that? Gerald. Did I say Gerald? I'm not sure. It didn't sound like Gerald to me. It sounded more like Carol. There was a man who got spooked off of his horse and died a few weeks later in this bedroom that we're standing in. What is your name? Are you here? Is there an entity or energy attached to that trunk in that closet? As soon as you left that room. Do you like to be out in the hallway? Go back and I'm gonna go into the pink room. Okay. Something about sh shut that room. Okay, well, not much up here. Do you want to switch off and I'll run it downstairs and see what happens? Yeah, let's go ahead and take a pass through the gold room on the way down there because we haven't popped in there yet. Mm. And see what we pick up on, see if anything maps in there. And then after that, we'll take a sweep downstairs and see what uh, that has in store for us. Oh, I just kicked the action camera. Hold on. <laughs> I'm on what we would call the Hot Mess Express right now. Ryan did a Ghost Hunter's no-no and switched his sleeping schedule around. And now he's paying dearly for it. Who likes to touch people's feet in here? <laughs> was that part of a story or was that just a random question? <laughs> <laughs> no, Heather actually said that there was a couple that stayed in here. They were on honeymoon anniversary or something and the um, they were asleep and the husband, while he was, well, the wife was asleep, the husband was almost asleep and the blankets pulled off of his the blankets pulled off of his feet and it felt like someone was trying to tickle the bottom of his feet. Really? Mm -hmm. Huh. We don't kink shame in this house, but we want to know why you're touching people's feet while they're trying to sleep. So many instruments we set up here for you to try and communicate with. Can you use one of them, please? Very quiet up here as well. 
it is very quiet. What's wild is, is we have this house absolutely loaded with equipment. Like the second floor, there is a device in every single room. Proximity, temperature, EMF. And so far, just like the basement, nothing has gone off. Ryan and I have switched off, like we said. We're going to go downstairs and do a sweep of the first floor. Maybe something will happen down there. We're going to leave all of these devices and cameras set up up here. Maybe, maybe whomever is up here will come out and show themselves. <laughs> Are you going to make it? <laughs> yes. Just a little bit off balance. Feeling a bit vertigo tonight. Whoa. Oh yeah, there's nothing over there, is there? No. There it is again. Yeah, it's not a false positive, whatever that was. Hello? Who's here? <laughs> I didn't like that. What's, What's your name? <laughs> Is this one of the root? Family members? This SLS sweep of Greystone Manor has been one of the quietest sessions of the year, and it doesn't seem like anyone wants to communicate with us. But there's one part of this haunting that we haven't investigated yet. The land surrounding the house that is plagued with tragedy. So Dave and I turn off the cameras and go outside to come up with a game plan. And while we're sitting out there, on the steps of the porch, something suspicious happens. We hear a car approaching on the quiet country road. But just before it passes the house, they shut off their headlights, cut their engine, and quietly drift to a stop just feet away from the end of the driveway. After a few seconds of silence, we hear the car door open and close. And then someone's footsteps walking in the trees surrounding the property with all of our cameras and lights inside. The only thing I can think to do is walk to the end of the driveway and snap some pictures of the car in case this becomes a dangerous situation. Whoever just stealthily parked their car by the end of the driveway of Greystone Manor is somewhere in the dense trees at 2 o'clock in the morning, and we have no idea what they're doing. We're now faced with a decision. Our plan was to have Dave investigate inside the house alone, while I explore the cemetery and the surrounding property alone. But is this safe? Where is this person? And why are they here? So, it took us a little while to get set up for this session. It has been about an hour or so since that last session because Dave and I walked outside to kind of scout out what was going on out here outside as to where I was going to investigate and just to grab us some air. And we were sitting outside within two or three minutes after we came out here a car rolled up and stopped right before the driveway to the house 
they had killed their lights before they got here. They had, they'd shut off their headlights before they got here and very quietly exited their vehicle and snuck off somewhere into the woods or down the road and we don't know where they went. So we were trying to figure out what was going on. But after it being about an hour of quiet, I figured it was probably safe for me to come out here alone. If not, we have video evidence of what happened, so <laughs> we'll find out. I'm gonna come out here to where the graves are. started here on my solo. That camera down there is on. Music box just started going off. Do you like that music box right there? I brought that here for you. try and play with. If you could, could you make it make the music again? If there's anyone who used to live here on the property, from any of the families, can you come through and tell me your name? People have seen lights out here in the woods. Strange lights. Who is that? All right. Okay, guys, I've got everything set up for the solo. Ryan is out uh, back where the graveyard and the barn are. And uh, I'm gonna be up here on the second floor. Seeing if I can get somebody in this house to communicate with me. Who was that man that just spoke? Sounded like you asked for your mama. All right, I'm in the red room here. All the way at the end of the hall the front of the house. Whose bedroom was this? Can you tell me? Can you tell me whose bedroom this was? There's supposed to be a tall man who stands right here outside of this door and scares people. What is that tall man's name? There they go.
strange jeep is gone. Someone's coming over here. Ryan? Yes. Are you good? Yes. Okay. They must have left. They did. Did they? They sped off without headlights. <laughs> yeah, they must have turned them on when they got down this over here. Huh. Because they had their headlights on when they were over here. Okay. All right. Very weird. Yes. That was Dave. He must have seen them speed off, whoever they were. And he said when they took off from where they were parked right at the end of the driveway, kind of off of the road in the weeds, they took off without their headlights on. So they started the car up and started driving off without their headlights on as not to be detected that they were driving, that they were leaving. They must have been doing something really weird. And it's always creepy when you're out here in the middle of nowhere to be alone out here knowing there's someone sneaking around and possibly doing strange things. Okay. Is there any member of the Root family up here with me? Could you come out and show yourself, please? Could you do that? I would love for you to be able to come out and talk to me. Let me know that you're here. You can use this device in my hand. to help you talk, help you speak better. Is that something that you would be willing to do? Color. Color. Yeah, can you tell me the color of this room that I'm in? What color is it? Did. Did. Do you know that I drove almost four hours to come here and talk to you tonight? So I was hoping you would come out and talk a little more than you have. You were playing the music a little bit, but then you stopped. Can you try that again? I come with the utmost respect, my sincerest regrets and horror and shock at what they did to you. I'm not sure if you even can understand me, but even if you can, I want you to know that I come out of peace and love I'm sorry that your land was disturbed. I'm sorry that your way of life was uprooted and burned to the ground. Stop what? trying to make sure there's nothing strange going on out here. If I shut the spirit box off, it's just because I'm listening.
500. 500, is that how many are buried out here? I'm going to come into the gold room here, as they call it, and try to talk to you in here. Goodbye. Goodbye? That's not very conducive to wanting to talk. You want to leave just as soon as I get in here? Start. Any member of the Root family, if you're here, please let me know. Can you do that? Can you please let me know? It's almost four o'clock in the morning. Bloody. What time is it for you? It's almost four for me. 4 a.m. Lower. Could you do me a favor? Could you try and close the the door to this room? Could you push it shut for me? How many unmarked graves are there out here? They stole your markers, your headstones. How many of you are there? It was a woman's voice that said, need to stop it. Need to stop what? I'm going to shut this box off here very soon. You're not coming through and saying anything. I'm going to move on to a different area. I'm a little on edge right now. There's been for sure someone sneaking around out here doing who knows what not out here but in the woods over there so when I hear noises I'm gonna stop and listen Turning that off. All right, I've walked into the, what they call the children's room now. Is there anybody in here with me? True. True. This was the children's room? Or true that there's somebody in here? Can you push that doll off the ladder right there? If you're in here with me? Or maybe turn its head? I'm pointing right at it, that doll right there. Can you push it or turn its head or make it talk? My baby. Is that your baby? 
Which one of these is your baby? Can you push it over or move it so I know which one of these is your baby? It's warm. Yeah. Show me which one of these is your baby. Sounds like Ryan is back. You have anything going on out there? Not a single thing. What about you? Not a single thing. Wow. Goodbye. Goodbye? You didn't even say hello. <laughs> Alright everybody, it is the end of the night here at Greystone Manor. That's right, end of the night. It's four, a little after 4 a.m. and we were exhausted, so tired we were almost falling over about three hours ago. So if we sound like we're slurring our speeches, we are not intoxicated. <laughs> we are just that tired. Oh yeah. Have you ever been so tired that you couldn't speak, that you were slurring your speech? Put it down in the comments below. Oh yeah. Yeah guys, Greystone Manor here has been incredible. It's been an awesome place. And uh, we're very uh, excited that we got to come here and finally check this place out. Yeah. As of right now, we don't know if we captured anything. Um, as far as actually in the moment, physically, things that we can recollect, we don't believe there was any moments where we felt we were capturing something that was proof of paranormal activity but that happens anytime you investigate as much as we do which is at least once a week sometimes multiple times a week you're going to come across locations that are renownedly notoriously known for paranormal activity <laughs> anytime you go to a haunted location as much as we do just once a week, sometimes multiple times a week, yeah. you're gonna come across a very haunted location with a lot of paranormal activity on a quiet night. It can't happen all the time. That's not real ghost hunting. No. That is entertainment, and we're here to show you that sometimes you're very bored. That's real ghost hunting. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate everything that you do for us. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel smash that thumbs up button and make sure you share this video with your friends and family because that helps us more than you know it sure does it sure does and if you want to support us additionally we also have a patreon page or you can become a member of the channel it's been a blast it has been a blast we're ready for the next adventure we're ready for the next location i'm ready for bed after we go to bed that's the next stop on this paranormal <laughs> quest bed We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye.